Hello everyone. Well, it's been a while since I did a video for you guys. Apologize for that. You know, it's the holiday season and things just got really, really hectic and busy in my house. Uh, I mean, I, like really hectic. A week before Christmas, I had my floor replaced, so my kitchen was out of commission for a good week, right, right, like right before Christmas. It was like a week before Christmas, so I was like, you know, what do you do? So, uh, you yeah, know, Got a new floor. Anyways, um, so then after that, of course, it was the holidays. And then, um, like a lot of other people around this area, I got the bug. I just, it's, it started as a sore throat, and it went into a cough, and I'm still not 100%, but I'm, I'm doing better. So I thought I'm going to be doing a couple videos for you here, and I'm hoping to get a couple of them done, um, like, one every week here. So, um, fingers crossed that this doesn't turn into anything worse than just a tickle and a cough and I'll be able to cook for you guys. So, today what we are making is clams with spaghetti. Yum! Now, I know a lot of you probably have never had clams or you know, you're not used to clams. Being Italian, we have seafood at Christmas time, so we, ha we eat a lot of it. This is a good dish, and it's easy. It's, it's one of those dishes that really is a very easy dish to prepare. And that's why I like preparing it. <clears throat> and I, really, it goes, it goes together so fast. So what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting up my onion. I think I've showed you this in, in previous videos, where I just slice my onion down vertically and then I will slice it and I want smaller chunks again or smaller dices so I'm going to do two horizontal slices. Watch out for those fingers. Um, always keep your fingers turned in when you're cutting. And then all we want to do is slice down and you can see how that just really dices up that onion really nice. Now I don't need a lot of onion in here. I'm really just making this for myself today so I'm going to go with about a fourth of a cup of fourth of a cup of onion in my olive oil. I do have olive oil in my pan over here. I have my stove uh, water cooking here, or my water boiling. Can't really cook water, can you? Um, I'm going to throw that onion in there, and I'm going to get that starting to saute a little bit. We'll move this over so that we don't. Um, have to worry about that. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to start my onions a little bit before I start my before I put my garlic in here. I think I've talked a little bit about that too where you want to um, just give your garlic a bed of something when you're when you're cooking because if you don't what will end up happening is your garlic burns really quickly so unless you have it on a really low heat and you know you're not really touching a pan real hot pan with it it's, go it's going to brown and it's going to burn as soon as your garlic it browns it's it gets bur bitter so you want to really be careful with that with your garlic so i always start my onions a little bit ahead of time and then once those start to release a little bit of their water and they start getting a little bit translucent that's when I'll add my garlic in. So that's where we're going to start with that. My water is boiling for my spaghetti so what I'm going to do now let's see if I can show you this here. There. Can't get too close. Get too close and then things happen that are not good like my camera falling into my my boiling pot of water. So what I'm going to be doing, oh that onion is strong. <laughs> What I'm going to be doing is adding a little bit of my, a little bit of salt to my water as it's boiling. You want to wait till your water comes to a boil before you add any type of salt to your pan. Reason for that is if you don't, you, that water is just sitting there. The salt sinks to the bottom of your pan, and the salt sits there and it doesn't dissolve immediately, so it can actually etch the bottom of your pans. So if you ever look at the bottom of your pans and they're a little bit white and you've been, you know, used to doing that, it's probably from the salt. So always wait till your water comes to a boil. Throw your salt in then. The water's moving. It's at a royal, rolling boil and everything gets mixed in really quickly. All right. So I can smell those onions. 
wow, like really smell them. So I'm going to start putting my garlic in here. And once again, I'm using my microplane for my garlic. And the reason I like doing that is that the microplane actually makes almost like a paste. You see that? It makes just about like a, a garlic paste. And I like doing that versus having big chunks in my sauce. So I'm going to just really start moving that garlic around really quickly here. Like I said, we don't want to burn it. Oh my goodness. There is nothing better than the smell of garlic and onions sautéing in a pan. Maybe you, maybe you, maybe you disagree with me on that, but it, yeah, it's good. <laughs> it smells so good. Okay. So while those are just kind of sautéing right up there, I got my water boiling. What I'm going to do is once I get my clams in here. I'm gonna just throw in my tomatoes. I'm just this is one of the another, this is one of those really easy recipes. Just dump it. So I have about a fourth of a cup of um, onion in there. I have one can of just diced diced tomatoes. So I just use one can of diced tomatoes. I always buy my, my my organic tomatoes. And if I can find them, I wasn't able to find them at the store store, but if I can find them, I will prefer to buy my tomatoes in a carton, you know, like with your broth comes in. And I'll show you that a little bit here. Um, because I just, I, I think they have, they have a better flavor. It would just be me, but I, I think they have a better flavor. So, all right, mmm, that smells good too. All right, I am going to go grab my clams. I'm going to turn the, turn the camera off while I do that. I'm going to go grab my clams real quick and um, show you what I do with those. Okay, so I am back. This is sauteing really nice. I'm gonna just turn that down a little bit because we don't want to cook that juice out too much. We do want that juice. Water is boiling. Um, clams. Now, in a perfect world, I would have had clams and mussels. That's what I was hoping to get, but as it happened, you have to get what the store has, and clams are alive, they're fresh, so you have to buy what, what's available. And all that was available today was clams. They didn't have any mussels. Um, it, was, it was a busy, uh, busy time of weekend or week with the holidays. So what you want to watch for with clams or mussels or any kind of shellfish like this is you want to make sure that they're closed. Now these, I, I kind of peeked at these before I put them in the water because I wanted to show you. I was hoping I was going to have a dead one, but they, they were all good. And I know that my my meat guy today, he he checked them over because I could, I could tell. He was checking to make sure that they were all closed. But if you see a clam or a mussel and they're partly open, that's okay. I mean, they are going to open when they want to breathe. But if you tap on them, real hard, you know, take, I always take a little bit of a spoon or something and I just tap them up, tap them. If they close, it's, they're okay to use. So if they're open, they're, they're okay as long as when you tap them, they close. Another thing you want to make sure is that when you start cooking them, when I open up this, this cover that I'm going to put on here, if I have any clams or mussels that have not opened during the cooking time, those get thrown out too because those are not good either. So, um, you know, it's, it's kind of funny, like, okay, you want them open, you know, you don't want them open, but you don't want them closed either. So, uh, just if you want, you don't want them open before you cook them, you want them to stay nice and tightly closed, but after cooking, you want them to be open. So that's, that's a good way of knowing how to cook your clams. So next thing that's going to go in here is about a cup of a good, um, seafood stock and these, and you don't have to use these if you don't like a real fishy taste in your your sauce. You can just use like a chicken broth, or I would do I would go more with a vegetable broth, I think. But I'm just gonna put about a cup of that in there. But that just gives it, you know, as seafood. I like the seafood taste, so that's why I go with the seafood stock. And then you also have to have wine. You have to have wine in it, and the wine cooks out. And I'll have wine if I can get this open. Oh my goodness, this is going to be a hard one, I think. Well, 
One minute. I'm going to go see if I can get this open. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Now my phone wants to fall. Hey, you never know what's going to happen in this kitchen, do you? All right. So, I got this opened. And I'm going to add about, oh, I'm going to say about a three-fourths cup of wine. Now, when you... I am so sorry. <laughs> I told you. You never know what's going to happen in my kitchen. All right. I did buy a new camera instead of having my phone, but I have yet to really learn how to use that. So I am so sorry. You know, it's live TV. What are you going to do? It's live camera. So, um, wine. Where was I? I'm going to start drinking this wine. <laughs> and you should. You should. You should only cook with wine that you want to drink. So, because you're never going to use a whole bottle. I always buy these small bottles. Yeah, I know they're screw tops, you know, but they're good for cooking. Um, it leaves me just a little bit for myself to have as a little bit of a snack for when things like that happen. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness, it's always something. So, we got our wine in here. <coughs> we have our seafood stock. We have our diced tomatoes. Oh, this is smelling wonderful. And then we're going to add our herbs. Now, with your herbs, what you want to do, and I'm just going to do a palmful. I would say that's probably about a half a teaspoon. I have my half teaspoon out here, so we'll see how good that is. Yeah, half a teaspoon. All right. So I'm going to put a half a teaspoon of my dried herbs in there. Now, any of your dried herbs you want to add at the beginning of your cooking. Any of your fresh herbs, your leaves, like I'm going to... Um, use some basil here in a little bit and some parsley. You want to add that at the very end of your cooking time. You don't want those fresh herbs are very delicate and you don't want to really um, destroy them. And that's, that's what happens. I'm going to add my, my spaghetti to my water here because I want to get that cooking. I'm not going to move my, my camera because we know what happens when Karen messes with her camera. So, all right, we'll, we'll get that cooking there. And I am actually using gluten-free spaghetti, but you are welcome to use regular spaghetti if you um, prefer. Either, you know, either one is fine. Just I, I, I'm gluten-free, so that's that's what I use. That's what I prefer. Um, I, I do believe that um, gluten really does not need to be in your diet. Um, even if you're not gluten sensitive, a little bit's not going to hurt you, you know, here or there. The bread that I use actually is not gluten free, 100% gluten free, but it's a sprouted wheat, and that is actually better for you than, you know, the regular wheat. So I've got that cooking there, so we'll get our spaghetti cooking. And I was kind of hoping that some of these guys would have opened up by now, but they have not. So these are all going to go right into our pan here. And what I like to do too is I like to put my clams in a bowl of, and you may even be able to see a little bit of the sand that came out of here. Um, I like to put them in a little bowl of salt water. And I like them to sit there for about 20 minutes. And what that does is the clams will recycle their water in, inside of themselves. So they will purge that sand. Now, if you buy your clams at the supermarket, they're probably already purged. They probably, you know, they do that before they sell them. So, um, but if, you know, if you weren't and you were going to be using them, you know, say you went to the ocean and you got some clams, oh, these are going to be good. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to cover this. And then after it's covered for about 10 minutes, these aren't going to take long to open up. You're going to cover them for about 10 minutes. And then you are going to see what the magic does. And I always call it magic because I just love opening this after it's been cooking for about 10 minutes. So we're just going to saute these for 10 minutes. And I got my, by that time, my spaghetti should be just about al dente. And uh, I, can, I can eat. So let me clean up a little bit here because I do want to talk a little bit about my parsley and my basil and I think what I'm going to do is 
really with scary having to move you, but I think I'm going to have to so that you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to turn the camera off while I get everything organized and just move you over to my counter. It's a lot safer that way. Okay, I'm back. So, and I thought about maybe I could maybe edit out that mishap over there, but I thought, eh, why edit it out? You know what? Makes, makes life more fun, doesn't it? So, what I do with my parsley is when I bring it home from the, from the store, I will wash it, and then I will stick it in the refrigerator in just a regular mason jar, just a regular canning jar, with a little bit of, see there's a little bit of water in there, and then I cover it, and you can either cover it with, you know, whatever little bag you have, and I just like using these little um, produce bags that I have, they're reusable, and I just cover it just like that, and that'll keep in your refrigerator a long time, like probably two weeks in your refrigerator fresh that way. Just like a little greenhouse for your parsley. So just a little tip on there that that's how you can keep your parsley fresher longer. And it really does work. It really does. I've, I've experimented with it and it does make a difference. Your basil on the other hand, your basil really doesn't like cold. Um, I, I know they sell it in the refrigerator section at the grocery store. I know, I've seen it there too. But really your basil wants to be kept warmer. So I just do the same thing with my basil. I just, you know, I just have a little one here and I just stick it. I always cut the end, like this one I just bought today. So what I'll do is I'll cut the end here, um, just like you do with your, your trees, your Christmas trees. Um, and then it has a nice little open end then where it can breathe and drink. And I just stick it in a nice little glass of water and I keep it on my counter. And so that's where you want to keep your basil. So just remember that your basil does not like cold, but your, your parsley does. <coughs> Excuse me. I was hoping my voice would hold up before the end of this video. So now what I'm doing is I'm just rolling up my basil. Because I don't like real big chunks of basil. I'm not a, I like basil, but I don't like to bite into a big, big chunk of it. So what I like to do is I just roll it up really tight, and then I just slice it very thin. And there's a fancy word for this chauvinat or something like that, but I'm not a fancy type cook person, so I just say I cut it into strips. And uh, I'm watching my spaghetti over there, because the last thing you want to do is overcook your spaghetti. So I'm just going to cut these up really thin, and you can just see what nice little shreds that makes. Alright, and the parsley I'm not too fussy about either. I just buy, I, I am fussy as about the, the kind I buy. I, I do like the Italian flat leaf parsley better than the curly parsley. Again, just my preference. So you use whichever one you like better. I don't use the stems. Just because I don't like chewing on stems. So there, I have my basil and I have my fresh parsley. And that's gonna go on at the very last minute. So let me see about my spaghetti here. Let's see if it uh, is done. Well, I have a big old scary dog here who thinks that she, you know, every little sound she has to think that something's going to attack her. That's got a little bit longer to go. So that's about it. One thing you do want to, Mia, one thing you do want to do is not to dump out your spaghetti water after you are done cooking your spaghetti. You want to save that water. Um, you need a little bit of it, and I'll explain that a little bit, a little bit here. But I am going to um, move you over just so I can show you this. And I am doing this with two hands because I don't want to really um, have a mishap again. Get my plate down here. And I'm going to take a peek here. And they're coming together pretty good. Like I said, they take a good 10 minutes before they're, they're going to be cooked. So what you want to do with your water is you want to add a little bit of that pasta water to your broth in here. What that's going to do is that helps to, I guess, incorporate or blend and not blend together, but a lot of people say marry your sauces together. And so that'll actually that starch in that water from the pasta will actually help thicken the sauce in your with your clams. So I always add not a lot, just you know, I would say probably a half a cup 
to the amount that I have here. And you can use a ladle or you can just use, I'm just going to use a measuring cup and I'm going to just pour a little bit in there when this is all done cooking. And that's going to be it. I'm going to add a little bit, one thing I did not add to that is I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper to my clams. I forgot to do that. So I'm going to just open this up here. Woo! Add a little bit of my, I add about half a teaspoon of pepper there and I'm going to add <coughs> half a teaspoon of salt. And we're going to give it just a quick little, little shake here. Oh, these are, oh, these are looking wonderful. These are looking really good. As soon as that spaghetti's done, I'm going to take it out. Like I said, I don't drain my spaghetti. What I will do is I will take my spaghetti tong. I will take my spaghetti, put it right into my dish with the pasta water. I don't rinse my spaghetti. Um, that keeps all the starch on the spaghetti. It helps you. Anything to add here? Oh, I have somebody coming to my door. No, nope. no, he's just a meter guy. And I have my big bad dog there really telling him he doesn't belong here. <laughs> it's okay. I'm sorry. A lot of distractions today in my kitchen, but you know what? It's, it's me. All right, come here. Come here. Yeah, come. She's like, no, I don't trust you. All right, so. This should be done. I believe my spaghetti has been cooking for about 10 minutes now, 10, 15 minutes. Oh yeah, that's real, that's, I can just tell by breaking it that it's good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, like I said, I'm just gonna scoop my spaghetti right out. And I don't use a lot of spaghetti. I am more, I am more into those clams than I am into my spaghetti, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, but now here is the fun part. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Oh my goodness. And I think he is coming to my door. So I might have to turn you off because he'll probably wonder why I'm talking to I'm talking. Oh, it looks like he's not replacing something. All right. So look at that. Yum. You see how these clams opened up? Look at that. Oh my goodness. I'm just going to take these. I'm going to get a spoon doing out there but I know pretty soon my, my doorbell is going to be ringing so I'm just going to take a spoon I'm going to spoon this up oh my goodness look how yummy this is there is nothing better oh my gosh and if you wanted to like I said you could add a little bit of the spaghetti water into that I forgot to do that because I was distracted by my Utility guy going outside there, but look at that. Yum. Wow. And then we're just going to sprinkle that with a little bit of basil and a little bit of parsley. That is a good dinner. Wow, I can't wait to dive into this. So, um, try this recipe. I think you'll really be surprised that maybe you do like it. Even though you maybe don't think you like clams or seafood, give it a try. This can also be done with shrimp. Um, that's one thing you probably won't ever see me cook because I am not a shrimp person. I, I do not eat shrimp at all. So, um, But this would be an awesome dish. You, you could do a couple different seafoods in there. You could do mussels, um, clams, and shrimp together. That, that would be good, good if you like those three combinations of fish together. You can even do, just do a white fish if you wanted to. I, I wouldn't do any of your salmons or anything like that, but any of your white fishes or your um, shell fishes, you know, fish would be fishes. Fish would be good in there. So I'm going to give this a good cover up here so that it stays nice and warm. And I'm going to maybe take a picture of this so that I can put it on my Facebook page and also my YouTube page. Um, if you like this recipe and you want to see more recipes like this, I promise not all of them will have fainting cameras on them. Um, you subscribe to my channel, my YouTube channel, and that will really notify you when I do a new recipe. Um, also, Facebook, you can you know friend me on Facebook on my Facebook cooking page. And I'm going to stop talking so I can go eat. Talk to you later. Bye bye.